And we're back. Hello, everybody. I'm Brian. I'm Kevin. And we're the, the Horror, Horror Guys. Guys. Episode 30, Big 3-0. 30. 120 movies reviewed so far on horrible on horrorguys.com. Mm-hmm. I almost said that other word there. Yeah. Yeah. If uh, you want to stop by the site, check out those written reviews. That's great. Otherwise, we've got 30 audio episodes you can go back and download and listen to. And, I don't know, 15, 17 or so videos you could check out. Mm -hmm. If you're not really sure how this podcast thing works, go to horrorguys.com. And over on the right-hand side of the page, there's five or six different buttons. You can subscribe using Apple Podcasts or Google Play or whatever the Android podcast player is. Stitcher. Uh, Spotify, whatever kind of system you like to use, you can do that. Or, of course, you can just click on the audio archive up at the top and listen to all of them right there on the website. Plays right off the website, doesn't really it? Really easy to do. Yes, it is. So just because you're tuning yeah. in on episode 30 doesn't mean you can't go all the way back to episode 1, because you can. And you can see how we've tweaked and changed and improved over time. <sighs> yeah. It's tweaking every week. Every week <laughs> it's a tweak. <laughs> what it not that kind don't of tweak. Tweak the, don't no, tweak the no geek. Tweaking? No tweaking the geek. <laughs> <laughs> well, this week, as usual, we've got movies. Mm -hmm. We've got The Invisible Man Returns from 1940. Then what? Uh, Drive-In Classic. Quatermass 2 from 1957. Mm -hmm. And the very new movie, 1922 from 2017. And our international feature, High Tension, also known as Haute Tension. Haute Tension. Haute Tension. We oui, we oui. it's French from two thousand and three. We're not right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're not right. Yeah. No, we're not right. Okay. Well, first up is the Invisible Man Returns, the next one in our Universal Horror selections. Which I kept wanting to call the Return of the Invisible Man, and it's not. It's the Invisible Man Returns. Is there a Return of the Invisible Man? No, I'm just confused. Yeah, so it's all kind of the same yeah. at this point. Still black and white. Yep, 1940, yeah, 1940, mm -hmm. directed by Joe May, written by H.G. Wells, sorta. Well, they say it's a sequel to The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. He didn't. H.G. Wells didn't write this sequel. He's credited. He's credited as the original. Really story, written by Joe May. Yeah, from S scratch. From stars from... Cedric Hardwick, Vincent Price, and Nan Gray. One hour, twenty-one minutes. Top bottom line, you like it? I did. I liked it. I liked it. I think I liked the first one a little than better original. than this one. I liked this one a little bit better. This was probably higher quality, better <clears throat> made, but I liked the story in the first one better. I liked the higher quality, better made, and I liked Vincent Price better oh, than Claude Oh, I definitely Rains. liked Vincent. I can't I tell you anything else. I because Claude, Claude Rains is, is a classic. But. He's a classic, <laughs> but what else has he done? I'm, I'm sure there's a whole list of things, but not much in horror. I don't know. Yeah, Vincent Price. Stuff. Lots well, of stuff. He's done he him. Yeah. 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 Jeffrey Redcliffe has been convicted of murdering his brother. That's Vincent Price. Yeah. In his first horror movie role. He gets like two minutes of screen time. Well, he gets more on time. A he's, lot more. He's invisible. Yeah. <laughs> he's Not yet. Well, he's scheduled yeah, he to be, be hanged in a few hours for murdering his brother. His fiancée, Helen, and his friend or lawyer or something, Cobb, are trying to get him released. He's a lawyer and business associate. Yeah. He, and, kinda, and he runs colleague. the mine. I and guess. Yeah. And he's it's also... the two brothers and Cobb are partners in the mine is the impression I got. Yeah. And he's also sweet on Helen. Yeah. His girlfriend. So, Radcliffe's yeah. girlfriend. Yeah. Radcliffe's girlfriend. Yeah. But the home secretary is out of the country, so there's nothing that can be done. Dr. Griffin goes to visit Radcliffe right before the execution. Soon after, Radcliffe is missing from his cell. He's escaped. He escaped. He's gone. The guard explains yeah. how he basically just vanished into thin air. Just his clothes laying on the floor. We see the invisible man go to a mm. prearranged spot to find a hidden suitcase full of clothes. He's planned this ahead of time. Yeah. How did he do it? Him and Griffin working together. No. Yep. Cobb confronts Griffin and said Griffin must know where Radcliffe and Helen are hiding. Inspector Sampson comes by and he recognizes the name Griffin. The original visible the original invisible man was this Dr. Griffin's brother. It doesn't take the cops long at all to put it together what happened. Really fast. Yeah. yeah. You know, in the first movie, it took like an hour for them to even figure out the guy was invisible. This one, they know it pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. The inspector already suspects that the same formula was used to save Griffin's friend Radcliffe. 
And that's true. In nine years, he has improved the formula somewhat where it works faster. Yeah. And how it worked was the guard was actually in the cell with him, and he went around the corner taking care of some toiletries business and quick injected himself with a hidden syringe, and the formula uh, works much quicker now. Much quicker. Yeah. yeah. So he injected, invisible, stripped, and the guard looked around the corner and said, well, he's gone. He's, you know, Where'd he go? Into Where'd thin, he go? Into thin air. Yeah. Radcliffe meets up with Helen, and he makes a few jokes about getting a job haunting a house. <laughs> it would work. Yeah. He makes Helen yeah. promise to chain him up if he starts losing his mind the way the first guy did. He knows what the side effect of the drug is, and he also knows his friend, the doctor, hasn't found a cure yet. Yeah, and Griffin hasn't really improved on it in that way. It's no. so slow they make you insane. Mm. Meanwhile, Griffin works on reversing the invisibility serum using an invisible guinea pig in an animated harness. And it works, but the pig dies. Mm -hmm. And it sounds kind of silly with the little invisible harness yeah, there. But it, really it kind of worked pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, it was a pretty good effect. And then effect. when the guinea pig dies, it reappears. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, sort of a cure. And a side note, too, you, you hear the expression, you know, being a guinea pig, you know, when you're experimented on or whatever. How seldom you see guinea pigs in movies in the lab. It's always monkeys and mice and... Lab you rats know, and, and mice. Yeah, and... and Yet yeah. it's it's part of our you know our language you know being a guinea pig and you know here here was actual guinea pigs. I assume using, things like you know. mice and rats are cheaper and easier to maintain than the guinea pigs because they're smaller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe not back then. Yeah. A policeman happens across Redcliffe and Helen, and Redcliffe is forced to disrobe. Helen returns home, but and it's okay. There's there's no full nudity because he's invisible. It's all hanging out though. Well, we don't know that. It's probably cold. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Helen returns home, and Cobb wants to know where she's been. Griffin is confronted and threatened by Mr. Spears, an unpleasant drunk who runs the mining company for Mr. Cobb. Radcliffe follows Spears out to his car. There are some invisible hijinks, and Spears ends up admitting that it was Cobb who killed Radcliffe's brother. Mm -hmm. Get rid of both brothers at the same time Hanky and take over the com on. company. And get Helen. Yeah, huh? Yeah. Win, win, win. Mm -hmm. Spears runs home, but Radcliffe knocks him out and ties him up. Radcliffe then shows up at Cobb's house and tries to force him to write a confession. Cobb pulls out a gun and starts shooting wildly. Cobb meets up with Inspector Sampson, who is determined to protect Cobb. Hard to shoot an invisible man when he keeps moving around. Yeah, but they do come up with some good tricks to do it. Yeah, they try, yeah. Redcliffe phones he Helen and Griffin and tells them to come over and celebrate. Griffin knows by now he's not going to be able to cure Radcliffe. Radcliffe then starts giving speeches about his great power. Mm -hmm. The madness is obviously starting. Megalomania, just like the first guy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Griffin tries to talk Radcliffe into giving the evidence to Inspector Sampson, and then Radcliffe will get off the hook for his brother's murder. Radcliffe just goes on and on about how he's going to get his revenge and he then wants take to over be the world. Hands on about it. Yep. So, Radcliffe knocks Griffin out and escapes. He goes straight to Cobb and leads him out of the out of police custody at gunpoint. He makes Cobb then drive him to Spears's home and confronts both of them about the murder. They then go to the mine and fight on a rail car. Way up in the air, one of those mining cars is getting on the, mm -hmm. on the trains. Tense it's cool. Act, tense action. Radcliffe yeah. is shot, but Cobb falls and gets buried under a bunch of coal and eventually confesses to Helen about the murder, and then he dies. Mm -hmm. The inspector is still looking for Radcliffe, even though he now knows that Radcliffe is innocent. Radcliffe shows up, wounded badly. He's been shot. He's not doing well. Yeah. Plus, the drug is starting to get to him. Mm -hmm. The dro doctor gives him a transfusion, and we get a very cool shot of the blood vessels appearing in human form. He reverts back to his visible self and wakes up, cured and exonerated. And a happy again. ending. And now everybody can be invisible if they want to with this formula, and the cure is a blood transfusion. Easy peasy. Might be not that simple. Could be. Or maybe they all just forget about it before the next movie. Mm, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's an Invisible Woman movie coming up. Maybe they don't. We don't know how that goes. I think the Invisible Woman is an entirely different thing. I don't think it's chemical. I think it's some kind of device that it makes is her invisible. Invisibility I, I, ray I don't think or it's, something. I don't think it's related. Well, I think we'll find yeah. out next week. We will, yeah. 
This moves pretty quickly. By the 15-minute point, the inspector already was looking for an invisible man. Yeah, yeah, he was right on the case there. Yeah. yeah. There are some good scenes of the invisible man in a rainstorm, and again with cigar smoke. Yeah, that was neat when they were trying to flush him out. Well, they, they had him trapped in the house, and it was raining outside. He stepped outside, and they saw... You, you could see, see the outline. outline as they tried Which shooting the effect. outline. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, so he ducked back inside quick, and they were trying to use smoke. But then he took one of the uh, cops. Uh, it's like tear gas filling yeah, up the room. Full, so they're all full wearing outfit, these yeah, gas masks. With the gas mask. He just took one of their outfits and blended in and snuck out that way. Yeah, yeah it was a really, really good uh, trick there. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. And this was Vincent Price's first real horror role. Mm-hmm. We saw him a week or two ago in Tower of London. Not real. Other than having Boris Karloff in it, that's not really a horror movie. And he was still fairly new in the business. That was his third movie. He, he'd done a few things since then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, body count? Two. Just two. Yeah. Cobb, who gets buried under a bunch of rocks, and Spears, who is hung by Cobb. Mm-hmm. Overall, it's entertaining, and the special effects were far better than in the first movie. Even with the gun with the wires. There's a note in IMDb that you can plainly see the, the wires holding the gun up, because he's, you know, invisible gun, of course, and, and it's quite a long scene where he's, the gun is floating in the mm-hmm. air. I looked and looked, and I couldn't see the wires. I didn't either. Yeah. Maybe somebody's gone through and cleaned it up since. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all in all. Just, just like the first time around, we don't get to see the Invisible Man until the final shot, but this time we get a happy ending. Mm-hmm. And I think the have to say the story is better in the first movie, which you don't. You yeah. disagree? Yeah, a little, a little, but this one is very good. Yeah. Definitely worth seeing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cedric Hardwick got top billing, but several of the other characters get a lot more screen time. Vincent Price had the majority of the film's dialogue, even though he's only on screen for a minute or two at the end. What else did we see? I don't know. Did we Quater see something? Mass 2. Oh. Electric Kugel. 2. We saw Quater Mass 1 last week. And Quater Mass. Was... The Quater Mass experiment was last week. This one is simply called Quater Mass 2. Came out two years later, 1957. Still black and white. First movie to use the number 2 as a sequel. And that's all he did. He just walked around and kept going, 2, 2, 2. Through the entire movie. Now, The Godfather Part 2, which was made in 1974, will try to tell you that, oh, we were the first ones. Mm-mm. Yeah. Quater Mass 2, 1957, it was a real movie. <laughs> it, it counted, yeah. It was in theaters was, and everything. Yeah, it was. People saw it and liked it. I mean, The Godfather yeah. 2 has got enough stuff going for it that it can claim to fame. It yeah. doesn't need the, the number yeah. 2 also. Well, people will say, oh, it was the first major motion picture, or it was the first... U.S. film, and like, whatever. It, Quatermass 2 wins. <laughs> There's a first American something of everything. So yeah. That, that's not really that big of a deal. Yeah. So anyway, got that out of my system. <laughs> so what's Quatermass been up to in the last two years? Well, this one's directed by Val Guest, written by Nigel Neal, and stars Brian Donlevy, same guy as last time, John Logan, and Sidney James, also known as The Enemy from Space. Hmm. Sounds sinister. It does. I bet there's aliens in this one. There was aliens in the first one. Oh, yeah. There there's were. aliens in this one, too. Yes. Yes. Wouldn't surprise me if there wasn't aliens in the third one. No. It's like that's just, versus that's the just crazy. No, there wouldn't be aliens in the third one. No, that would be too much. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler, we've seen the third one. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we, at one point, you said you thought you had seen one of them in the past. Which one was it? I saw the third one. Yeah, yeah, I've seen the third I was, one also. But I was very young. I know it wasn't when I came out, because I would have only been two. But, but, I, but I was very young and somehow saw it. And then I was mixing up. I've seen parts of this. I saw parts of this one before. And I was mixing them up and yeah. kind of merging them in my memory. I definitely remember. Yeah. I, I couldn't have nice told you which one them. I had seen before, but it was definitely I saw the third one. It's in color. Mm-hmm. And I think I've seen the first one before. I don't mm-hmm. think I'd seen this one before. Yeah. It was nice seeing them all three in, in yeah, order and yeah. getting it straightened out. Yeah. A couple are rushing to the hospital, but the man runs the car off the road. He's been burnt, and the girl says it was this handful of stones that looks like meteorites that did it. They're not meteorites. No, of course not. Spoiler, they're not meteorites. 
The radar guys are watching a handful of small objects coming in slowly. Too slowly. They're not meteors. They're fast, but not meteor fast. Meanwhile, Quatermass has had the budget for his moon base canceled. They've got a rocket, but it's untested. Quatermass drives to where the meteorites fell, but finds a dead end. The government has the area cordoned off. But what does he find? He finds a full-size <laughs> yeah. replica of his moon base, along with a bunch of meteorites. He's got this de- model on his desk of the, the moon base. Looks really cool. Mm-hmm. But the domes no, and everything. And a real well, one they out went the ahead, They went ahead and built it, yeah, without telling him. Or one of the meteorites anything. blasts his assistant mm-hmm. in the face. Suddenly, they're surrounded by the military. The soldiers have all been infected. Mm-hmm. The soldiers keep his assistant as a prisoner or hostage or something. We don't know yet. Until he gets taken over. Yeah. Until it sets in. Mm-hmm. Crater Mass goes to the police, but they refuse to help. He goes to the inspector in London. The base at Wimbledon Flats is top secret, so whatever's been going on there, they all ignore it. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be research into a new kind of synthetic food. That's the cover story. He talks to Mr. Broadhead, and he gets an invite to go see the base with him. The man who goes to pick them up has a scar on his arm. Turns out they all have scars. Mm-hmm. That's how the aliens get in. Mm-hmm. They begin the tour and sneak off to check out the base's medical center. Broadhead wanders off again, and something nasty happens to him. He gets the so-called synthetic food on him, and it burns him to death. It's not food. Spicy food. Mm, Yeah, it's not even spicy food. I've had some like that. (laughs) Quatermass jumps in a car and speeds off, dodging machine gun fire. He drives fast. Yeah. Little action in this Well, they're sluggish. They're they're zombified. Yeah, yeah. They're they're not. not, They're not up to full operating capacity zombies with guns yes yeah. good thing because otherwise it would have, end, would have ended differently yeah quatermass goes no. back to inspector lomax and tells a story of body snatchers mm-hmm. he explains how broadhead died and then sees the newspaper that announces that broadhead has left the country on a trade mission they're covering lying it yeah it's a conspiracy. lomax goes to talk to the commissioner but he notices a mark on the commissioner's hand He's infected. So it's a vast conspiracy, but not a complete conspiracy yet. There is hope that this can be defeated. They trace the meteorites to an asteroid about 200 meters across in orbit around the dark side of the Earth. So how does that work, Mr. Science? They just stay between the, the Earth and the Sun. Okay. Well, they, they, it's a constant, you know. I know you always got to explain the dark side of the moon. Well, I mean, you could really do that if you had, if you wanted to. You could stay in the in, in the, the dark side of the, of the geosynchronous orbit. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. 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 Be keeping keeping the Earth between you and the Sun. Do you think the writers knew that, or they're just using words? No, I think they did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He thinks that the aliens cannot live in Earth's oxygen unless they take over something that lives on Earth, like a human. They got to possess them. The moon base they built is for allowing aliens to live on Earth instead of humans on the moon. You know, an enclosed oxygen environment where there mm-hmm. wasn't anything to breathe before. Mm-hmm. You could do the same thing and put some other gas Just inside put it. ammonia in instead of oxygen. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Quatermass sneaks inside the plant and sees a giant pulsating blob inside the dome. It's like a collective of a bunch of them blob together. Blob, 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 blob. blob. This yeah. is what the creature really looks like. The local peasants get roused up and start overrunning the base, killing the zombies who now start shooting back. Which is, again, a good thing that they're kind of slow and sluggish and not up to par. The local villagers have, like, they pitchforks have and baseball sticks. Baseball bats and yeah. sticks. And, and they, they it's a military base with fences and armed guards. And they just, you know, they storm it and knock the fences down and take the guns away. Find, and very few of them get shot. And, yeah, they manage to take it over. They all hide in the dome supply control room where the ammonia is pumped in to keep the creatures alive. Quatermass turns that off. And then turns up the oxygen, which he believes is poisonous to the aliens. There's a standoff and a battle, leaving 300 foot tall blobs, three 100 foot tall blobs, rampaging around the facility. Because it made them mad. And, and they can live for a little, being that big, they can live for a little while and they yeah. do some damage and they, they're, they're mad. They're they steal angry. a jeep and yeah. get out of there. Mm-hmm. Quatermass has a backup plan, however. He wants to launch his moon rocket at the asteroid and blow it up like an atomic bomb. Well, not at the asteroid, at the base. At the asteroid. At the asteroid? Yeah, it's at the asteroid. They shoot down the asteroid with it. Okay. Yeah, oh. they don't blow up the base. Okay. His assistant launches... Because the, oxi- the air takes care of the 
you know, I mean, it's an atomic base. bomb inside, you know, England. I mean, they're not going to do that. They're, they're, they're using the atomic bomb to blow up the asteroid. You know, I think I misunderstood that. Yeah, yeah, okay. definitely on that one. His assistant launches the rocket just as the zombie guards shoot him in the back. When the rockets hits, when the rocket hits, the blobs explode and die. Boom. Yeah. Destroyed the mothership. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Quatermass was about 12 years too soon for the real moon landing, but you could tell a lot of thought went into his moon base. Invasion of the body snatchers things and uh, ammonia aliens have been used in various things. And there's there's things here that you'll see from other other horror movies. Yeah, like there's a lot here. And stuff. Yeah. You stuff. Watching the movie mm-hmm. now, it doesn't seem that original. The spores infecting, you know. That was in Star Trek with the. Spock. Oh, that's right. The one, guy got shot in the of, face with a meteorite uh-huh. with the spear, that happened, that just like that episode Spock. with Spock got yeah. uh-huh. shot in the face with spores and possessed mm-hmm. and did a bunch of stuff he didn't want to do, just like these guys. Yeah, yeah. They had it first. Yeah, Quatermass had it first. Quatermass is cool. This was one of, if not the first movie to use the number two to denote it as a sequel. We already talked about we did, that. We did. <laughs> <laughs> Although the original Invasion of the Body Snatchers movie came out a year before this one, there are some similarities, but enough differences that I'm not sure that they necessarily copied them. No, I don't think so. They may have borrowed but the some idea somewhat. Yeah. The big industrial scale of the factory, mass producing the, the pod spore things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some things going on there. Yeah. Even so, it's really obvious to see the film's influence on later movies. Mm-hmm. Everything from the Body Snatchers to Beneath the Planet of the Apes stole liberally from this. Yeah. If mm-hmm. you've seen the very ending of Beneath the Planet of the Apes, it's the same, almost identical scene. Kind of, yeah. So the movie had exactly the same mood and atmosphere of many of the third Doctor's Doctor Who episodes from the early 70s. Yes. One of my favorite Doctors. It did, yeah. And mm-hmm. I wonder how many of the same people worked behind the scenes on both. British. Br- British movie, British, British uh, BBC yeah, stuff. Very likely. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Just the fact that this movie felt like something from the 70s tells me it was way before its time in 57. 57? Yeah. This yeah. was like a long time before that. Yeah. But oh. very very similar in a lot of ways. So did you like it? I liked it. Mm-hmm. Me too. Yeah, I think Overall. I liked it better than the first one. Overall, a thumbs up. Yep. The effects were better. Uh-huh. Um, Action and heroes. And more realistic than the and, first one. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. All around better. Want to do spoilers and compare it to next week's? Not yet. No? Okay. Nah. Tune in next week where we watch... Next week we'll compare Quater all three and The Pit. Yeah. Yeah. Short film? Yeah. Yeah. We saw one um, called um, um, The Host. The Host. From 2017. Host. Yes. And this is from the same people who did uh, The Whistle, which we recorded, which we did our review on that way back in episode six or seven or something like that. Way on early. You can, you can search it out. It's easy. It's created by Klaus Quirin, starring Julian Gluns, Thomas Schmidt, and Kai Bost. Sounds, Sounds kind very of German. German, doesn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah. yeah. Not Four in, minutes, 35 seconds, and it's subtitles. It's, you got subtitles. Yeah. Very little subtitles. It's yeah. short. There's not a lot of dialogue. There are some guys sitting <clears> together, <throat> four guys sitting together playing video games, and Klaus, the host, gets go, gets up to go get more beer. The lights flicker, and Klaus is gone. One of the friends goes after him and dis- disappears when the light blinks as well. And then there were two. Then there were two. Yeah. The power goes out completely, and the remaining two guys light up their phones. We get a brief glimpse of something behind them, and then we see the various players being removed from the video game. Player one, removed from host. (laughs) Player two, removed by host. Player three, removed by host. Player four, removed by host. The end. Something like that. You like it? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Short and sweet. Very good. short, yeah, four very and a half good. minutes. It's not a big investment. Well filmed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like that. Again, not much of an explanation, not really much of a story, but it makes sense. It's got stuff going on that it's entertaining. Nicely filmed with the contrast between the light areas of the house and the dark areas of the house. Dark, but not yeah. too dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thumbs up. We've seen some that are a little too dark. Mm-hmm. This, this was not bad. It was good. Yeah, four and a half minutes worth it. Yeah. 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 Do a little time travel? To 1922. 1922 was a very bad year. Stephen King's... The film, however, came out in 2017. Spins us a yarn. Directed by Zach Hilditch, 
Written by Stephen King and Zach Hilditch, stars Thomas Jane, Molly Parker, and Dylan Schmidt. One hour, 42 minutes. And normally we have a link in the show notes to our affiliate links for Amazon. And of course, if you ever want to buy any of these movies or pick up any of these movies, click on our links. We get a little bit of percentage on that. So, hey, why not give us a little, little percentage if you're buying the movie anyway? Mm-hmm. This one, however, you cannot buy at Amazon. This is Netflix it's only. only Netflix it's right a now. Netflix original. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, They're keeping it. Yeah. But to, we link to the book. Link to the book, yeah. right. Check that out. See if you don't compares. know where Netflix yeah. is, look for it. Netflix.com. Because mm-hmm. nobody's heard of that. Yeah. Wilfred James is in room 209 of the hotel. He listens to a noise outside the room, and then he sits down at the desk and starts writing his confession. And this is actually some years later. He's flashing back to 1922 yeah. when, the, when the events Here's a happened. Here's sc- scratching at the wall. As credits roll. Mm-hmm. We go back in time and see his wife, Arlette, who inherited a hundred acres, and Wilfred had eighty of his own. Between the two of them, they expect to provide very well for their son, Henry James. Well, Wilfred does. He wants the farm to last forever. Arnett's think, not so convinced. You think Henry James is a coincidence, or this has something to do with the turn of the screw? I didn't get that reference at all. Okay. Yeah. It's not that un- uncommon of a name. Yeah. yeah. Arlette wants to sell the farm, <clears throat> take the money, and move to Omaha or St. Louis. And divorce Wolford. And divorce Wolford. Yeah. Well, not not at this point necessarily. She just wants oh, yeah. them all to, she wants the whole family to go in the beginning. Later on, she wants a divorce. It doesn't take long at all, though. No, no yeah. not really. Yeah. Why does it not take yeah, long? Because right, Will says, yeah. cities are for fools. He's got this thing where he talks through his clenched teeth through the entire movie. You can understand him, though. Mostly. And it doesn't sound like that. It doesn't sound like it that. It doesn't sound like It's that. worse. It is not. I really kind of wish we had watched it with the subtitles turned on. Yeah, it was good. Will offers to buy the land from her, but she laughs at him. She offers to sell her portion of the land and split the money in a divorce. Will doesn't like that because she also wants to take James with her. Will admits that he's come to hate her. They have numerous fights over the land and what will happen to it. Will hatches a plan with his son, Henry. Will gives in and says he'll give in and move to town. It's all right. We'll sell the land. We'll move to town. That's what he tells her. Yeah. Yeah. The three of them then go out. The three of them then celebrate. She gets really drunk. Bad move. Mm -hmm. Will and Henry sneak into her room that night after she passes out. She struggles, but the two of them wrestle her down and cut her throat. And it is the most amateur murder ever. Yeah. yeah it's And it's messy and bloody. Messy and, and bloody yeah. and poorly done. That's not how you... They, they, uh, Henry goes in with his burlap sack, tries to put it over her head, while Wolf try, gets in there and cuts her with a knife. And, of course, she wakes up with the bag over her head and fights back. And mm-hmm. That's not yeah, how you do it. Stabbing and cutting and, yeah, and, yeah. Not how you do it at all. Well, Wolf, Wolfer does the actual murder in, but Henry was definitely in on it. In on it enough to take some blame. Yeah. And and I like this line that I murder is sin, murder is damnation, but murder is also work. Because they have a hell of a mess to clean up, <laughs> to cover it up. A lot of cleaning afterwards. Yeah. Afterwards, they dump her body in an <clears throat> old well where she's partially eaten by rats. One of the better scenes of the movie is the rats. Yeah. They then, yeah. to cover up the body, they drop a cow on top of her and use that as cover as to why they had to fill in the well, mm-hmm. which I thought was pretty good thinking. Which I'm glad. First thing they're going to yeah. do is dig up the well, but there's a dead cow in it. It's yeah. a really obvious dead cow. And, well, and, and at first I was thinking that's the lamest way to dispose of that body because Dre, he dumps it in at night and then the next morning he lifts the lid and it's like right, the body's right there, down yeah, there. Yeah, just look and, down in there and see and it's not that deep of a well. And it would be smelling and like, what? This isn't going to cover or fool anybody. But yeah, he has a plan. Yeah, they pack up yeah. a bunch of her stuff, as much stuff as she could carry in a suitcase, and the story is she left them and walked off in the night. And they do that before the cow. They throw in the suitcase yeah. in with the body. So literally, that stuff is gone. The next mm-hmm. day, the buyer's lawyer shows up, and Will tells him to get lost. They don't want to sell. She's already started the process of selling the land. Now, Will says, nope, not going to do it. So it's a little suspicious to yeah. him, and he calls the sheriff, and the sheriff comes a-calling. Mm-hmm. 
And the sheriff goes through the house, and he accepts their story. He doesn't even look at the half-buried dead cow that they spent so much time working on. The only thing that they, did you notice, that they almost screwed up on, he forgot her shoes. Her shoes were still under the bed. And the sheriff's like, hmm, you know, she wouldn't walk off barefoot. Well, he must have took, show, she must have I, took her other shoes. Yeah, Wilford Quick comes up with, you know, he must have took the shoes that aren't here then. Uh, you know, yeah. You know, making, making it sound like, duh, sheriff. Like, you can you know. have two pairs of shoes. <laughs> yeah, but he did screw up. It was a moment of, oh, shit, he forgot a detail. <laughs> but the sheriff buys it, and mm-hmm. it looks like the perfect crime. That night, they find one of their cows being chewed on by a carnivorous rat. Rats had never been a problem before we saw them on our lat. Mm-hmm. No rats around here, and now there are. Now there are. Yeah. James, come home, James comes home and explains that he's gotten his girlfriend pregnant. He and Will fight about it. The girl's father wants $75 to send the daughter away to have the baby. It actually costs 300 for this Catholic school where she'll be boarded and have the kid and give it away and then come back and he settles on well you know your portion you got to be better come up with at least 75 yeah yeah. except he doesn't have it yeah he goes to the bank to get a loan for the money but while he's there his son leaves with the girlfriend they don't want to give the baby away it's the girl if he says if will goes looking for him henry will tell everything to the police and about this point, I'm thinking, you know, Wolf's going to have to kill Henry to keep this secret. That's what I was thinking. I was expecting it to go that way earlier. Yeah. That he'd have and maybe to kill, kill the, the girlfriend, and too. kill the girl, and kill the neighbor, and kill yeah. the, you know, to, it's not keep what it, happens. to cover it up. Yeah. That no, night, he dreams of rats. The sheriff comes around the next day and says Henry is suspected of robbing a store in the neighboring town. Uh, later on, Will is bitten by a rat in the closet of the house. Bites him like right here. Ow. That's a graphic owie scene. Months yeah. pass, and the hand, hand gets badly infected. There's a really good scene where he tries to start the car with only one good hand. Since it's 1922, he's got to deal with one of those crank starters. And it's the dead of winter. And it's the dead of winter, yeah. and he just start. can't do it. Yeah. So he stays there with his rotten hand, and it gets worse. And a hole in the roof, and he can't repair the house. And he's... And he's have you gotten to the drinking yet? No, no, I'm getting there. Yeah. Will starts drinking heavily and hallucinating. Well, he takes some patent medicine. Yeah, some that medicine his wife too. Had too. So he's tripping on. That would, I mean, 1922 pain reliever over the counter could have been heroin or opium or all kinds of all kinds of codeine. Things, yeah. And, you know, it, yeah. On top of alcohol. So <laughs> he's under stuff. some kind of influence and falls down the steps into the basement. He sees Arlette and a bunch of rats come down the steps after him, and later on he says. When she gets to the bottom of the steps, she whispered secrets to me that only a dead woman could know. Actually, he says, she whispered secrets to me that only a dead woman could know. And she tells him through flashbacks. She's, she's given him words, but we see all this. She tells him how Henry and his girlfriend are out robbing banks and stealing cars. The girl is shot in the back and dies in an abandoned farmhouse. Henry then shoots himself in grief. The rats get him before the body is found. And, of course, later on, the sheriff comes by and he says, yeah, all that really happened. So it wasn't just a drug-addled hallucination. Things that only a dead woman could know. Yeah. Yeah, she told him what was really happening. And and bank robbery. He goes to see the teller where where Henry robbed the bank. A little later. Yeah, a little later. Will finally gets a ride to the doctor who amputates his hand. Henry's body comes back and Will has to identify the body which is a mess. Mm-hmm. He sees Arlette and the rats at the funeral. Rats are now everywhere he goes. His house and barn are falling apart. His friend won't buy the land when he decides to sell it. And his cow gets sick and he has to shoot her. Like a country song. Even my cow died. Even the cow got sick. Mm-hmm. Finally, he sells the farm, gives in, and does what he's told. Mm-hmm. He moves to Omaha and gets a factory job, but he still sees rats everywhere. Okay, back to the present. Wolf finishes his confession letter in the hotel several years later. The door opens and Arlette, Henry, and the dead girlfriend comes in with hundreds of rats. In the end, we all get caught, he says. The end. The end, pretty much. Yep. Leaves his note. So, really, there's, other than the bit about him getting information that he shouldn't have known... There's no real proof that any, any supernatural happened here. He could if have been hallucinating or that, imagining the whole yeah, thing. If it wasn't for that, it could have been entirely in his head. Guilt, 
yeah. combination of mm-hmm. extreme guilt and telltale heart desire. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. He hears yeah. it in his head; nobody else does. Yeah, but it was at least some of it was supernatural. Henry never sees the dead woman, the sheriff, mm-hmm. or nobody ever sees no, the dead woman but him. him. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's left to the viewer, I guess, to decide whether it's real or not. But I sort of get the impression from the movie that it is. Mm-hmm. It, it's oh, real. I think so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Thomas Jane must have taken classes of the Tom Hardy School of Acting. Mumble talking through his gritted teeth to the point he's really hard to understand. Still, he's got the ability to be a pretty boy in one movie and a tough, scary, murderous farmer in the other. So at least he's flexible. He really does pull off the role very well. He does. Being yeah. both hateful mm-hmm. and relatable at the same time. But those teeth. Whoa. The gore shots are really good. That really bothered you a lot, didn't it? <laughs> I know he can speak very clearly when he wants to. The gore shots are really good. There's a scene where Wolf looks down the well and sees the body down there with a rat inside her mouth. Yeah. Very realistic and creepy. Mm-hmm. The movie overall is kind of slow and has a lot of buildup. Don't let that stop you. And the climax no. is a little bit of a letdown, but it's constantly building as it goes, and it's, very, it's, it's entertaining well all the done. way through. Yeah. yeah, the three, well, all the uh, the three main characters and all the supporting actors were all really excellent. Mm-hmm. Authentically, you know, 1922, somebody really put a lot of work into making it all seem. Yeah. Yeah, hundred years ago. Yeah, no cell phones. That was almost 100 years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. All, all in all, thumbs up, definitely. Yeah, thumbs yeah. up. Mm-hmm. Except for the mouth and the teeth and talking through his clenched teeth. Even that part. All right. I could do this all day, but I won't. Haute Tension. High Tension. High French tension. film. 2003 is up next. French with subtitles. Directed by Alexander Aja. Aja? 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 I don't not know. Sure. Yeah. Stars Cecily de France, May Wen, one word name, May Wen, and Philippe Nehon. One hour, 31 minutes. And this one has an Amazon link. And before we begin here, I'd like to say don't give the ending away. You're going to give the ending away. So let me say here, you may want to pause the podcast. Yeah, don't ruin it for anybody. This one, it, yeah, this one. I went into it ruined. Somebody had ruined it. Somebody online had, you know, I just casually came across. And I had never seen it before, <clears throat> didn't know anything, and was not spoiled. The ending is. I thought it was yeah. much better not knowing. Yeah. yeah. And, and I knew, and I think I would have enjoyed it more. So this is the last movie we're going to cover in this week's episode. So pause and come back later on if you have not seen it. Mm -hmm. Don't listen if you have not seen it. If you've not been soiled. Yeah. Really go into this one blind. Yeah. An injured girl limps through the forest as the credits roll. Uh, Her name is Marie and she's dreaming actually. Marie and Alexia are driving along and Maria explains... Marie explains that what we just saw was a dream. So that didn't happen. Yeah. They're going to spend some time in the country to study in the away from the city at Alexia's parents' house. Then we cut away, and we see a man in a dirty old van, dirty old man in a dirty old van, getting pleasured by a woman. You see the hair going up and down, up and down. And he's doing the hot talk, you know, baby, yeah, yeah. That then he finishes one. up, reaches <laughs> down, grabs her by the hair, and drops her severed head out the window. Yeah, he was literally getting head from her, yeah. <laughs> you went there okay. I, went, I went there yeah <laughs> but really yeah. effectively filmed because you don't know that at first no it <laughs> looks like there's somebody down there yeah. and you see the back of their head and they're doing their thing and it, it, it looked normal until it wasn't and that's the closest thing to humor in this movie yeah there's I nothing noted, funny in this movie I noted gruesome shocking and humorless well, I praise. Of, well, it is, yeah. A lot of these are done, you know, kind of tongue in cheek, or there's some humor thrown yeah. in and stuff. It's really grim. We both laughed at yeah. this one scene, but mm, that yeah. is mm. it. Yeah. So the girls arrive at the house. Alexia's dad lets them in, and they meet Tom, Alexia's little brother. They talk about boys for a bit, and then finally head off to bed. The man in the truck drives up and rings the doorbell. Dad answers and gets stabbed in the head. I told him, don't know, don't do it, don't answer. He doesn't Did die he though. He just he bleeds and yells a lot. Yeah. The family dog gets it next. 
Yes, the dog dies. Yeah. But not at the end. Almost first. Mm -hmm. Mother comes down the stairs to see what's going on, and she's attacked too. Oh, and the father in the meantime has been killed in a very creative kind of way. And bloody. A lot of blood. All the deaths in this are pretty creative. Yeah, pretty creative. If you like the gore, this isn't good. Very juicy. Yeah. Very, yeah. Marie hears all this and tries to climb out the window. She then struggles to find a working phone jack to plug into. Meanwhile, the killer starts up the stairs. She hides under the bed and he passes her by. Actually, he lifts up the corner of the mattress and there's nothing down there. And she's hiding she's way over on the other the, side. Yeah. There's a lot of good tension and good suspense in it. The, the you cat mean and mouse. High tension? Yes, high tension, yeah. Yeah, the cat and mouse has done really well. Yeah, of, yeah. yeah. He's after her and she's hiding. Mm -hmm. So uh, Alexia is upstairs sleeping with earplugs in and misses the whole thing until the killer wakes her up. Surprise. Maria hides in the bedroom closet until the mother crawls in, looking for the phone also. The killer then cuts her throat right in front of Maria, still hiding. Mm -hmm. It's another good gore shot, and the killer Splattered. then saws her hand off, spraying blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. Is there any point to the hand? He just wanted just to do it. Because he felt like it. It's what he's into, this sort of thing. Maria mm -hmm. finds Alexia, but she's chained up and can't get the chain open. Meanwhile, little Tom runs out into the cornfield, and the killer goes after him with a shotgun. We hear a shot, and there's no more little Tom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're like 20 minutes into this thing, and we're down to two people left, Maria and Alexia. And the guy. And the guy. Yes. rest of the family's dead. Mm -hmm. Maria finally finds a phone, but the line's been cut. The guy then carries Alexia out to his truck. Maria grabs a knife from the kitchen and hides in the back of the truck. She's going to stab Thinking him when he shuts the door. Thinking she's going to be clever, except he just shuts the door he and goes around her in. back and shuts the door. He doesn't mm. know she's in there. Mm. The guy locks the back door and drives off with both girls in the back. And he smiles as he looks at the photos of all the girls he's collected in the past. Ew. He's got a really, really creepy smile. Yeah, he's a creepy guy. It was well cast. Well cast, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's good at this. Mm -hmm. Good in this. Yeah. Doesn't say a lot, but he's good. Yeah. They stop at a gas station, and Maria tells the guy inside to call the police. Then she goes and hides in the back. The guy acts a little weird, and the killer knows what's going on. He gives him an axe through the chest. Then he steps on the guy's back, driving the axe in deeper. Just to add a little extra injury more there. Gore, more blood. Yeah. The killer locks all the doors and starts to hunt for whoever it was the clerk was looking at. She gets out, though. Oh, I think he knows who it is by that yeah. point. I think he knows it's her that's stowed away in the back. And, yeah. finally, more, cat, more cat and mouse. Yeah, finally yeah. the guy drives off and Maria <clears throat> gets to a phone and calls the police. Unfortunately, she can't tell the police where he is, where she is, so they can't tell. Can't help. It's just one of those just, generic gas stations with no she's sign out front. Of nowhere and, you know, she don't know. <laughs> she takes the clerk's car and goes off in pursuit. Before long, it becomes a battle between this old truck and her sports car. Unfortunately, she winds up upside down in the forest with a burning car. She gets out and limps over to a nearby greenhouse. She grabs a big stick and wraps it in barbed wire, like Lucille, Lucille. in The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. And now Makes she's ready Lucille. for him. Mm -hmm. She whacks him with a rock and then the barbed wire stick. When he falls down, she just keeps on beating. Mm -hmm. He still doesn't die, so she smothers him with a plastic bag. Then there's a twist. <clears throat> the killer is not really dead, and he has a huge concrete saw. Mm. He then chases run, 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 run. he then chases run, run, Alexia run, 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 through the woods, run, run, Texas run, run, run. chainsaw style. Run, 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 run. <laughs> to the first twenty-five minutes, I thought was really kind of boring. A lot of setup. Mm, a little yeah. bit too much. Maybe, until the but... until the guy drives up to the house, it's a little on the boring side. Haute tension is just French for high tension, and this movie does fit that name. Once the killings finally begin, it's just one long game of cat and mouse. The killings are all very creative, especially the last few. The blood, the gore... Concrete, you, did you know that uh, hiding in a car does not keep you away from a concrete saw? No, no, you know, just just if, say it. If, yeah. this, if this ever happens to you, you know, don't think the car is going to protect you. The blood, gore, and makeup effects in this are simply awesome. I usually don't like straight up slasher films, but the because of the tension here, it is very good. I thought mm -hmm. it's, it's not predictable. Yeah. Well, everybody dies, but ish. Well, yeah. But you know yeah. that that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was very good. I thought. Mm -hmm. 
very yeah. very good and yeah. not not even, too long even even having it spoiled yeah you know, well we didn't say what the big twist the was so twist there's a twist there's a twist oh. hmm. and that's our show yes it is thanks for joining us stop in at horrorguys.com for news and horror updates to comment on the podcast or to contact us we would love to hear your suggestions for other movies to watch we're always looking for feedback from listeners so talk if, to us if you're an indie movie maker and want to Give us a, a, a preview copy to, to review. We'll do that. Share the podcast. Yeah. Talk about it on Twitter. Yeah. Contact us on Twitter. Yeah. And we'll be around next week looking for more. Mm-hmm. Want to watch some movies next week? Yeah, I think we should. How about The Invisible yeah. Woman from 1941? Which I think is more of a comedic I than, think it is than too. horror. Yeah. It's still considered in it's the series. The universal things. Yeah. yeah. Still part of their series, but yeah. Bracing well, myself for humor. Yeah, 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 I think it's. I think so. Mm-hmm. Quater Mass in the Pit from '67, ten years after the second movie. Mm-hmm. The very new movie Don't Breathe from 2016, and the international The Eye from 2002. And this will be interesting because I've seen the American remake of The Eye. You know what, so what uh, uh, country this is? Spain, I think. I think it's a Spanish. All right show. then. Yeah. Check out our Twitter feed at, at Horror Bulletin and our group Horror Guys Podcast on Facebook. And of course, we're at HorrorGuys.com. Mm-hmm. I'm Brian. I'm Kevin. And we'll see you next week. See ya.